So one of these higher dynamic functions we're going to work on today, I call the cantilever effect. As far as I can tell, this is unknown, so I could well be the first person talking about this. But this is the first of many of these dynamic functions. I've got to pull my centre of gravity back as I lever forward. And this backward projection of the, of the hips creates a cantilever. Hi there, and welcome to body efficiency training. And this training is based upon the idea that there's a better way of using your body, a way that is more efficient. So it's not so much about what you do as how you do it. And when I, when I say a better way of using your body, I do mean that quite literally. There are higher dynamic functions hidden away in the body that we need to discover and access and make use of. And let me give an example of a higher dynamic function. Even walking on two legs is a higher dynamic function of the human body. We don't instinctively walk on two legs. The baby's only instinct is to crawl. And there have been examples of children brought up by animals. Uh, and there was a film once, I think, by a child brought up by dogs somewhere in uh, uh, Eastern Europe. And he'd never seen a human, so when they found this, this, this kid, he was walking on all fours. He's learnt from the dogs. And even after they taught him to walk on two legs, still, whenever they left him alone, he they'd finally goes back to walking on all fours. So walking on two legs is not instinctive. He had to see that before he could do it. But nevertheless, it was a higher dynamic, dynamic function that he had in his body that he did not know how to use. Um, and we have more of these, and, and more and more advanced versions. You can think of it as downloads for controlling your body. At the moment, we're controlling our body in, in a certain way. There is a computer program controlling the movements of our body. But imagine we could upgrade that to a better version. A better program that uses your body in a better way. And that is what we're trying to do here. So one of these um, di higher dynamic functions uh, we're going to work on today, I call the cantilever effect. And again, as far as I can tell, this is unknown, so I, I could well be the first person talking about this. Um, but this is the first of many of these dynamic functions. And this lesson comes in two parts. So this is part one. And in part one, we're talking about big cantilever, the whole body. And put very simply, it's, it's leaning forward. How do you lean, in, lean forward correctly? How do you uh, bend from the hips rather than the spine? Um, so now, before we start this lesson, uh, let's recap what we did in lesson one. Lesson one was standing up straight. So I want to go through that uh, with you once more with a diagram. So let's cut to that now. Okay, so here we have my drawing of a man standing up straight. So the lesson one was how to stand up straight. And this is giving you the basic positioning of the spine. We want the nice natural S-curve of the spine. And this comes down to the sacrum and the pelvis. And the first things first, we want a slight backward tilt in the pelvis. And that is about seven degrees. So a very slight tilt, which will give a, a slight curve here in the lumbar and a rounding off here at the top. The skull sits on top here of the neck, and there is a balance point for the skull, which we'll talk about in, in later uh, lessons. But for now, you can think about it as just, you can find it by just dropping your head forward and back, less and less, until you can find a position where it balances. And you'll see it's just tilting slightly up, and then if you pull the chin in, you'll get a little stretch in the back of the neck here, and that will open up and your, your skull will sit nicely on the top of your spine. And then it comes down to the legs here. Now the lumbar, the most important thing here, the lumbar, if you notice, this section, there's only this. There's no skeleton here, just a little bit of spine. Everywhere else, there's quite a lot of skeleton going on. So this is the weakest point of your body. And the most important thing to remember here is we need to pull the stomach in. Okay, and this is the TA muscle. We'll talk more about that later. But the TA muscle, the transversus abdominis muscle, is the deepest one and it activates by pulling in. So you're always trying to pull your belly towards your spine. And this is to, imagine this, you're trying to strengthen the spine. So the only strength you've got on the front comes from this TA muscle. 
If this TA muscle is not activated, there is weakness at the front. This spot. What is holding this up? All that's left is the lumbar muscles. So we need strength in the back and we need strength in the front. But the back already tends to be tight. We need to work on the front. So you've got to pull in the TA muscle. And then the next thing to note is the sternum. The sternum should tilt very slightly up. So your rib cage is open. Now again, we don't want to flare our ribs too much, but that won't happen. If you've got the stomach tight, it will prevent the ribs flaring too much. But the, the expansion you want in the ribs is more towards the back. You want to feel the ribs expanding at the back. And this is the deepest part of your lungs. You will access the deepest part of your lungs if you can breathe here from your lower back. So this gives you the idea, the basic idea of the, the muscle groups that you need to hold to hold this position right. Now the other thing to learn is the centre of gravity. Now you've got a lot of weight in your body in the front. All the organs, your belly's in the front. So a lot of the weight is here, which means you're going to be pulled forward this direction. And you, you're always taking your weight a little bit too forward onto the front. And that, gives a, that means you hunch over. This bit hunches over and too much work done by the back. Now, if you notice, the skeleton is actually in the back of your body. And we're trying to find the alignment through the skeleton. Okay, this skull is not quite right. But what we want is a line which is your center of gravity that goes through the S-curve, nice and even, and comes down to about the midpoint or the, nearly the ball of the foot here. So the, this is your center of gravity. This is your balance point. And you'll see it's towards the back of your body, not towards the front. Most of us will have this line somewhere forward. And then you've got to do a lot of work. So the whole, to find the standing up straight position, it feels more like you're leaning backwards, not leaning forwards. And especially if, if like this guy, your arms are out, even more weights to the front, that means you've got to lean back even more to find this balance point through the spine. Now, if you can do this, your entire weight is taken through the spine and the skeleton and it's far more efficient than struggling with it by holding the muscles. And in particular, always one or two odd muscles that get cramped up and injured. All right, so that gives you that again. Now let's move on to the next part, which is the cantilever effect. So what is a cantilever? Well, imagine you're trying to build a platform and this is the stand for it, here's the ground. And you want to be able to stand someone here. Okay, so you're going to put pressure here. Now, if you build it like this, the, the only strength comes from this joint here. And you, you can see the center of gravity of this whole thing is around about here or somewhere here. And that means you can only take so much pressure before this thing will break or this thing will fall over. So a cantilever increases the strength of this platform. And how does it do it? It does it like this. It extends backwards. So now the, the, the support is here and this becomes a pivot. So you can see this might be able to teeter on this. So that means when you apply force here, this bit is gonna go up on the pivot. So how do we prevent that? Well, then you tie a rope or tie a wire from here to here that prevents this going up. Now, this point, if you put pressure, is extremely strong, okay? Because not only is it taken by this pivot here, is taken by the leverage of this whole thing that goes down to here. So we want to try and achieve this cantilever effect in our body to maintain power at the extension of our limbs, okay? So how does that happen? Let's have a look at the next bit. All right, so now in these diagrams, I've tried to show the bone structure. So in this first very poor uh, posture, you can see the, the, the curve, the natural S curve is gone. The lumbar has been hyper, hyper extended. This is, overstretch in the lumbar, which means this is going to be very prone to injury. Then the hips are locked. The hip joint is locked. So that means it tends to tuck the pelvis under, which gives even more of a stretch to the lower back. Um, and the rest of it also, we'll come to that later. Now number two here, this guy is getting a bit better. So he's tried to still maintain a bit of the S curve. Okay, but he's still, the hips are a bit locked. So there's still going to be a bit of loss of, of uh, efficiency around the lower spine and it's the center of gravity is still too far forward so there'll still be too much work going on here. Now guy number three is doing the full cantilever effect. So we've got the natural S-curve and this S-curve is still identical 
to what he was having if he was standing up, to the very first position. So we haven't compromised the structure of our spine at all. So where has the movement come from? Well, the movement has come from here, the hip joint. And I've done this here the, to separate the... I've drawn the, the pelvis here in this funny shape to give the idea that when you lever the hip joint, what you're actually doing is levering the hip joint out of the socket. So you're trying to move the hip joint in the socket. And this stretches the tendons around the hip, and then the weight is taken by the, strength, the stretch in the hip joint itself. And the tendons are very, very strong. So all your body weight can be, be handled by the tendon stretch in the hip joint. So this takes some practice, and we'll, we'll go through it now um, in physical form. We'll practice this and see if we can actually feel this somewhat. Uh, and, not, and furthermore, he's, he's shifted his centre of gravity back, so he's reduced the weight, the load of weight on his, on his spine, um, and this, you can see now, is literally a cantilever, and this whole thing is a cantilever. But in the hip joint, there's another smaller one, a smaller cantilever going on. Oops, that way. Which we'll, we'll do this, we're, we're going to talk about the cantilever and the joints in a bit more detail, in part two of this lesson. Okay, so let's go to the one-to-one -one session I'm doing with a student and we'll work through a couple of exercises to try and experience this uh, for ourselves. The most important thing to do in, in this practice is always do it slowly and carefully. There should never be any pain. No sharp pain. The moment you feel any pain anywhere, you've got to stop. Stop, pull back, hold back. There's no point doing the exercise if you're doing it wrong. The point of this is not to just do it. The point of this is to improve your structure. And you can only do that by experimenting cautiously and carefully and trying to feel it. And because you're using your joints in a way that you may not have done before, there is a risk of injury. You are stretching your joints to a position they may have never been before. So you've got to do it very slowly, very carefully. There should be no pain and it will feel right. It will feel, oh, that feels nice. It will feel like a pleasant stretch um, and it will feel stronger. You will feel the strength in there. Uh, okay, so let's go to the one-to-one -one session and see how we get on. All right, let's loosen up. Again, one small twist in. So we're going to work on the cantilever effect, uh, which is what I call it. And this is uh, an interesting thing. This is actually one of the, one of a, 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 a kind of secret hidden within the body. It's, it's got a, the body has got some higher dynamic functions locked away in it. And we don't know what they are. We actually are quite clueless to, as to what they are. If we can find these functions that the body can do, in other words, the body is supposed to be able to do things and we don't know that it can do them. If we can find these functions, then that unlocks a lot of the efficiency. And one of these things I call the cantilever effect. And we're gonna just go straight into it to explain it uh, by doing it. Um, and we're gonna do it in a very simple uh, exercise. So we come back to the middle. So we start off with, um, Standing up straight, so just just uh, quickly, so lock out the knees for a second, so nice and tight, squeeze the buttocks, you have the toes very slightly pointing out, okay, that lets the hips open a little bit to the front, but at the same time you want to pull your stomach in and that closes the hips down again, so now the stomach comes in, try and pull in the obliques, lift up the rib cage. now for a second interlock the fingers, hands go behind, lift up the rib cage behind, lift up the shoulders a bit, Pull the elbows back, good. Lean back with the head. So now the upper body is leaning back in the sofa. But as you lean back, squeeze the buttocks and pull the stomach in to stay rigid. Good, so now this is a nice stretched up position. Good, okay now, try to keep that, let the hands go down at the sides. All right, so now here from a straight standing position, we're gonna fold in half and we're gonna create a cantilever. So how do we do that? We, we fold, we bend, bend from the hips. So what you've got to do is keep your legs straight. You start to bend from the hips, that is, you've got to stick your bottom backwards. Now just a little bit first of all. Now check, pull your stomach in, lift up the rib cage. you're still arching backwards. Good, 
and then bend a little bit further forward. Keep the legs straight, lock straight. So now you're getting, you're getting a stretch in the back of the hips, in the glutes. So you've got to project your bottom out. At the same time, you've got to pull your stomach in and lever slightly further forward. I'll come side on like this. So what you're doing, as you push your bottom out, you also take your weight to the heels back. So you've got, your bottom goes further backwards as your head goes lower down. Now you can let your hands come down like you're reaching forward, but if your hands hang down, now you've got to pull the shoulders back a bit Open the rib cage, pull the rib cage back a bit, look up a little bit, pull the stomach in a little bit, good. Then you can leave a little bit further forward, lock out the knees. So you're trying to keep a 90 degree is what you're re reaching for, perfect 90 degree angle. And the more your hips go back, the more you get a stretch in the glutes, the stretch in the hip joints, and you're using the psoas muscle to pull yourself forward. And the lower you go, the further your bottom goes out. So this creates a cantilever. My centre of gravity, if it goes too far forward, I've got to work too hard. I've got to pull my centre of gravity back as I lever forward. And this backward projection of the, of the hips creates a cantilever. Good. Now to come back up again, first things first, squeeze the glutes. You haven't moved. You've got to activate the glutes muscles. And now you start to squeeze and push your hips back in. So keep arching back, keep arching back, stomach in. Drive the pelvis forward to come back up again. Good, and then loosen up for a second, bounce up and down. That was quite a lot, of the a lot of tension in the body, and then twist left and right. So always relax after high tension, loosen it up. Check there's no tension locked away in the body. Loosen everything up, twist the wrist, flick out the feet. Okay, we're going to try that again. And what you've got is two parts to the motion. You've got the lever forward, and that pull forward comes from the psoas muscle, which runs down inside here, that pulls you forward. And then you've got the lever back, and that comes from the glutes, the butt. So here you've got to squeeze the glutes to drive the hips back in again, to lever back up again. Now the trick is, you want to go forward and back without using your back muscles. You're trying to do it all in the hip joint. Okay, so you want to keep your spine in its natural position. Usually when we go forward, we compromise the spine, you see. I've gone like this now, I've hyperextended the spine, all these muscles have got to do some work. What I'm trying to do is do all the work down here. And my spine is still in the position that it's resting back in the sofa. Okay, and, we're, with the, and this movement is identical to sit up on the floor. But the sit up on the floor, the gravity is working differently, so we'll do it afterwards. So let's try this in a different way. So first look up nice and straight. So we're not, we're not engaging the knees, we've just got to lock that straight. Clench the thighs, grip the toes, squeeze the butt, pull the stomach in, but you've still got an arch here. So you're not, you're not tucking the bottom under, the legs got to be straight, you're just clenching. Pull in the obliques, the TA muscle, lift up the rib cage. Now what you're going to do is bring your hands to your waist, so your thumbs go behind, like you're touching your kidneys nearly, and you grip round the waist, that's it, good. Okay, now here, lift up the rib cage, the shoulders, look up for a second. Feel the nice upward arch in the spine, good. Then look forward. Now we're going to try and maintain this and lever at the hips. So you gradually lever forward, just a little bit. And now just check, pull the stomach in, stick the bottom out. Again, lever a little bit forward, arching back, projecting the hips further back, pull the stomach in. Good, lever again, take the weight back on the heels. So you're pushing your hips away from you. Lever back, that's it. Keep going as far as you can but only go as far as your hips will stretch it out. Pull in the stomach, pushing the weight right back on the heels, right back on the heels. Good, now squeeze the glutes and don't release. Keep squeezing, squeezing, squeezing to push the hips back in to their forward position to rise up again. Good, and loosen up. Shake it around. That's working, the whole body is doing one go. Good, now loosen up with a twist. Now this, is, this thing is when you do any sort of work leaning over, this is how you've got to do it. So we'll try, we'll try one more, uh, which we'll just go halfway to practice. So have your legs a little bit further apart, good. Now this time we bend our knees. So knees go over the toes in that direction of the toes. Stick the bottom out a little bit, pull the stomach in now, pull the obliques in. Lift up the rib cage, lift up the arms, lift up the shoulders, pull the rib cage back. The hands are in front of your chest or in front of your shoulders rather, good. 
Now from this position, look up for a second, shrug up, and then pull the chin in. So you've got the stretch right up the neck. Now from here, we're going to lever forward, still arching back, but only going to about 45 degrees. So you've got to stick the bottom out, pull the stomach in, now squeeze the glutes, your weight goes back on the heels, and you try and feel how much work your lower back is doing. Try to reduce that work by holding it into the glutes and the hips. Good, good, then go a little bit lower, and then to come up higher, go up higher, squeeze the glutes, and then a little bit lower, just levering at the hips, trying to keep the spine neutral, and again squeeze the glutes, so it's between the glutes and the psoas muscle. You're controlling the hip joint to lever. Good, and come up. Let go again once more. Shake it all out. And that's a lot of tension. Release it right down to the ground and twist out. Very good. So now we're going to do the very same movement we just did standing up but sitting down. So because the standing up one was working the back more with the glutes. Now this one is working the front more, the psoas. So before we do this, let's warm up the psoas. Sit like this with your knees slightly apart, in a sort of baby position. Now first what, what I want you to do is wobble from side to side, so you lift up one hip, and then try and pull that button, buttocks back a bit, and then sit on this one. This one, you pull this one back a bit, sit on this one. You're trying to sit right on the sit bones. There's a pointy bone, and you'll feel it on the hard floor. Yes. Now that makes you sit up nice and straight. So, just rest your hands on the knees. Now, first things first, lift up the rib cage, lift up the shoulders, arch a little bit back. Now, pull the stomach in. Try and take a moment to pull all the way down to the groin going in. The obliques as well, all this gets tight, so you feel a stretch in the spine. And you're trying to sit up straight, trying to pull your stomach forward. You should feel it right in the groin. This is the psoas muscle. So now, keeping this upward stretch, you lean, start to lean back like you're leaning back in a chair, but you don't crunch your spine, you're still arching back. You've got to pull the stomach in and feel the stretch right into the groin. And then you pull yourself back up again by trying to push your hips back into the ground. See, so this is using the psoas, you'll feel it right down in the groin only. So you lever a little bit back and then lever up to a nice upward spine. Lever back, pull in the stomach really tight, pull in, pull in, pull in. Lever forward by trying to push your hips back. Okay, one more go. Lever back, this stretches out the psoas. Grip with the psoas, lever up. So you're not using your abdominals so much as your psoas muscle, but what you are using is your TA muscle to pull the stomach in, flatten it down. Okay, you're trying to always bring your stomach back towards your spine. So you're condensing around the spine. That's very important. Okay, now for here, loosen up for a second, shake out the feet. Okay, so now we're going to go to have a go at trying to do the actual full exercise. So, first things first, now this time have your legs straight in front. Do the same business, wobble left and right, and try and pull your hips back. I'm trying to pull this hip back, pull this hip back, pull this hip back. Now you'll feel I've got a nice arch here, I feel pulled up nice and straight, sitting on the sit bones. You might have some tension here, you activate the psoas muscle already. But you've got to keep your legs straight in front. Now lift the arms up, like this. Good. Now, you're going to lever back a tiny bit, only a little bit. At this point you must pull in the stomach, pull in the stomach. Still trying to arch back, lock out the legs, and then pull yourself back to the 90 degrees. Think about stretching upwards and pushing your hips back to go forward. Again, lever back, pull in the stomach, pull in the stomach, feel it in the psoas muscle, pull in the stomach, then drive your hips back to lever up. Very good. Last one, lever back as far as you can without bending the spine, and then pull the stomach in, lever the hips back to pull yourself up. Good, and take the pressure off. You should feel it all around your upper thighs, down your groin, even a stretch in your lower back, but be careful, no pain. No pain in the lower back. Very, very careful. Loosen up the feet like this, shake out the hips. Okay, now we're going to try the full exercise, but because of your body weight, you're going to have to arch your spine. So we lie down like this, uh, and it's important that the distinction. The first part is the crunch. So you pull in your stomach, you start to crunch forward, so you are bending your spine, reach your hands out. So now you've got a crunch. Now this is the abdominals. 
But now to lift off the floor, it is the psoas muscle. So to lift up, you've got to crunch, crunch, crunch. Now you try and drive your hips back into the ground to lever up. And as you come up, you're trying to straighten up as soon as possible to reach up to the end position. Good. And then you go back down, lever back as far as possible. Then you have to start crunching. Pull the stomach in, crunch, stretch. So now you are create a C back. Lever down, control from the psoas, and then release it out. Okay, from here, relax for a second. Just drop your hands at the side, wiggle your feet. Take deep breath into the rib cage. Good. And last one, hands come up in front. Now you start crunching forward. Let's build it up, chin to the chest. Chin to the neck, rather. Now you start to curl forward, pull the stomach in, crunch forward. Now to lift up, you've got to bite with the psoas muscle, trying to drive your hips down into the ground. Leave it up, and as you come up, straighten up, push your hips back, pull your stomach in, stretch up nice and tall, and then we'll stop there. Very good. Take the pressure off, relax for a moment.